I would love for you just to take it away and, and tell us about your experience with the seven steps to reprogramming yourself and total health mastery's trainings. Alrighty. Well, a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Janice Hoffman and I worked for John Gray, the author of the men are from Mars, women are from Venus books back in 1996, which was a time when I found what I wanted to do with the rest of my life and my passion. And at the time I had health issues but at the same time, I knew that I, the opportunity to work for somebody at that level, at, at the height of his career, was a really big deal. And so I ran with it. And I, that was in 1996. In 2007, I wrote my own book called Relationship Rules, 12 Strategies for Creating a Love at Last. And John Gray endorsed it. And it's done really well. And even knowing all the aspects of relationships and Knowing, having a toolbox full of communication skills isn't everything. And I had health challenges with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. They got worse in, in five years time because I got my medical re records out. In five years time, I went to the ER 29 times. And that were, those were just the really bad episodes. There were plenty of episodes where I didn't go to the ER in that time. And I was trying to have this great career and launch my book and the speaking career. And at the same time, I was battling an illness that you can't really talk about with other people because people's digestive and elimination system isn't usually at the top of the topics to talk about with your friends and colleagues. So I really suffered alone. And it wasn't until five years ago, so it had been 2014, that I was so sick with IBS and I live alone and was battling it alone, and the medical profession was just want to throw prescriptions at me that worked when you took them. But as soon as you stopped your seven or ten days of taking them, just back to being sick, and I'm not really big on pills and Western Med. And so I was actually ready to do a family-assisted suicide and get my family and everybody together and say, you know, I, I just can't live like this anymore. If this is what life is going to be, you know, I'm ready to check out. And a friend of mine had been bugging me for a long time to go see her naturopath physician. I have a couple of friends who are naturopath physicians and I thought, well, what is this? What does she know that my friends don't know? And I resisted going and it wasn't until I was on death's door, so to speak, that I conceded very begrudgingly to go and I went and they found parasites because it was an Eastern medicine type of uh, approach and a lot more accurate actually. And, and so here I was sick, for all these years with parasites and didn't know it. And, and I got better. I got a lot better. I didn't get all the way well. I got about 70, 80% better and realized that the, the rest of the work that I needed to do wasn't physical because I adjusted my diet. I adjusted uh, my supplements. You know, we got rid of the parasites. I did all the physical things necessary to get well, but there was still like, emotional work, I guess you would call it, that I needed to do. And I've done a lot of stuff. I live in Boulder, Colorado, where every weekend there's probably 30 or 40 workshops on whatever your flavor of spirituality or personal growth might be. Um, so there's a lot of things to do here. I've done probably more than the average person. I've done, I did A Course in Miracles. I, I did uh, Attitude and Healing. I've done Neil Donald Walsh's work, Conversations with God. I've done modalities like acupuncture and acupressure and cupping, cupping the cups, um, rebirthing, breath work, watsu massage where they, where they spin you in water, um, uh, EMDR, which is the eye. I've done EFT, the tapping. You know, they all had their meditation, um, chanting, uh, more, even more stuff than that. But that listeners an idea of what all I've done and what all is available here in Boulder as well. But and still at colonics, um, I did everything. I'm a Virgo, and so I wanted to be 100% well. 80% wasn't good enough. 90% wasn't good enough. I had to be 100% well. So then I started doing some emotional work, all those different things, and they all had their place, and they were all helpful. But you know, I'd have uh, you know, an episode where the rug would get pulled out from underneath me and I'd be kind of right back where I was or at least feel like all that work I had done, I felt like I should have been further where something, an upset happens 
that I can handle it better. And, and then I would kind of beat myself up for not being where I thought I should be. And that evolved to the point where when I, July of 2018, when I did the seven steps, I was to the point where, okay, I've taken responsibility for everything I know to take that I've done that I can take responsibility for, for, but now everybody's talking about this unconscious level of, of being and doing and health and all this other stuff that I'm gladly will take responsibility for, but how can I take responsibility for what's at the unconscious level that I don't know that I'm doing, which really pissed me off. It's like, I want to take responsibility for something, but you know, the God, the universe, whatever, isn't going to clue me in on what that is. So I can, it's like a, that's like a mouse just chasing its tail. So when I had the opportunity to do seven steps, I thought, great, I'm going to go do this with no expectations. I didn't watch any videos, any testimonials. I didn't want to know anything about the seven steps or you or anything. I just wanted to go with just an open mind and open heart and, and see what came out of it. And, and I did, and I got there and as people were filling the room, my ego did a 180 and all of a sudden I decided these weren't my people. I didn't want to be here. You know, what have I got myself into? This isn't going to work. And just, that just became more and more and more and more and more and more. And I sat in my chair and I just thought, I shouldn't have done this. I'm in the wrong place. I shouldn't be doing this. And people got up and gave testimonials and one after another, after another talked about how great their life is. And I thought, yeah, you know, but you, you haven't had my life. That's, that's, I'm glad this works for you, but you don't understand me. And my life is different than all of you, which is now that saying that out loud sounds very egotistical, but at the time, that's what I thought. And, and, you know, and, and as a professional speaker and (laughs) speaker to speaker, I don't know about other people, but when somebody gets up to speak, the very first thing I do is size them up. And so, you know, what I would, I would imagine other people, you know, you pay for a seminar, a workshop, you come, and your first thing you do is size up the person who's making the promise or that you paid the money to and that you expect the, you know, the expectation from. And so you looked really healthy and you looked really young and you were so calm. You have such a calm presence and, and, and so, you know, there's kind of an envy, jealousy, like, how could he be that? How could he be that? And, you know, just, and it was like tea and a tea bag and a, and a hot cup of water where the more I was there and the more it brewed, the more it was like, this can't be. And then we paired up and we did our very first seven steps with a partner. And I went first and I just started writing, you know, I don't want to be here. These are not my people. This is not going to work. And just, just, you know, I felt so sorry for the woman. I, I still want to apologize to her this, to this day because she didn't know me from Adam, but I'm just kind of going off. And um, and I remember you came over, and one of the things I wrote was, um, Arno can't know me well enough to to help me at all, or something to that effect. And and you came around at at one point, and you said, um, "How you doing? And do you want to share some stuff on your on your list?" And I said, "Really." You know, and I remember reading that one to you thinking, you know, here, you think, <laughs> so, so my point is I was a real hard sell and I was probably the last person in the room that believed that this was going to work because I was so wanting to just walk out at that moment. And I wrote, I remember after you walked away, I wrote, I have no control over my life. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I wrote it, I knew that was a lie. And it was like, you know, the heavens parted. I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but it was such an awareness that that was a, a lie that it just stopped me in my tracks. Cause you know, who got out? I, I came all the way from Colorado to Irvine, California. Who got me there? Who put, you know, I did, you know, who showed up that I did. Who's doing the, what you asked us to do. I am. So who has control over my life? I do. And, and it was like, Oh my God, I've been telling myself I have no control over my life. And I just realized that was a lie. So that means every area of my life is about to change. And, I, and then in that moment, I knew it, but I didn't even know what it was going to look like. I just knew that was huge. Huge, 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 huge. And that's probably when I did the 180 from like, this is never going to work, to, oh, my God, my life just changed in one sentence. For, and and, and not, you know, for real, like, I'm not just saying that. It, it really, really did. The other part about... 
<clears throat> doing the seven steps was I believe it was the next day we went out and found our own little corner in, of the room and we did the seven steps with ourselves. And I had the very unfortunate experience of dating somebody. And after we broke up, he stalked me for five and a half years in a very unconventional way. I decided that what I was going to work on when we broke out into small groups or when we broke out individually was I was going to work on this person who stalked me. And I just ranted, you know, I did like oh, all the stuff I'm angry about and all the stuff I'm, I'm um, afraid of and, and, and all the stuff I'm sad about and everything. I just, two and a half pages of just like, you know, just F word all over the place, everything. And, and then I wrote, I was writing what I was afraid of. And I wrote, I'm afraid that someday I'll forgive you. Mm. And then I wrote, I'm afraid that someday right after that, that I will look at what you did as um, a lesson. And I just, again, you know, it was just jaw dropping, drop your pen. Oh my God, did, who wrote that? Because the idea that I would ever forgive this person was not even close. In fact, my I had a nickname for him that wasn't very nice. And um, it was on that day that I decided to drop that nickname because I realized that was hurting me, not him. And now I just refer to him as a factual term. Um, but that was another big, big thing, because I knew that even though I couldn't forgive him and I couldn't look at what he did as a lesson, I knew that on that day that someday I would. And that was in a very weird way, comforting that I wouldn't be mad forever. Mm. And I wouldn't carry this pain forever that I would get to that point where I can say, you know, what happened to me has had this positive outcome. And without, that happening, I wouldn't be where I'm at and look at it as a blessing or a lesson or and be able to bless him on his way and not feel the way I felt, you know, a year ago. And and I can say, you know, it's been, what, 14 months since then? And I, I have softened greatly in that regard mm-hmm. with regard to that particular issue. So that was just what happened when I took the course. And then I came home and I remember when people were, te- were giving their um, testimonials, one thing they said, this common thing, all of them said was it works, but you have to do the work. It works, but you have to do the work. You can't take this home and and just put it under your pillow and think it's going to osmosis, you know? And so that really stuck with me and because I'm willing to do the work, just like when I said I have my IBS, it's like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. I just, I can't do what I am unconsciously doing that I don't know that I'm so I more than got what I asked for in terms of taking responsibility for what I unconsciously was doing that I didn't know and taking the seven steps. Um, And I did do it on my own and I did some trades with some other people that had taken the seven steps. And then I decided to actually got robbed at a grocery store and I chased the the guy who robbed me down. And um, turns out he was a 45 year old on heroin. I thought he was a student. I didn't think much about chasing after him. He was my size. Um, But that led me to doing private coaching coaching sessions with merit which has been very very good at getting deeper and deeper so if i'm going to do the seven steps it's, you know it's like well let's just go for it let's just go deep and you know clear as much as we can and and so almost every week i have a session with her and you know one of the really great things about the seven steps that i really love is i've been able to Instead of me and my emotions and my history and my story and my health and my all that being all part of this whole body, it's now, and it feels so good to be able to say this, I'm like the neutral observer in the body and all that is like the cubbies at a kindergartner. You know, when you go to a kindergarten classroom, they have the the cubbies where all kids put their stuff. Like that's what happened to me when I was a child in that cubby. And then that's what happened to me when I was married. And that's, those are the stories from this. And, and, and I can pull them out and tell them and, and recall the emotion and everything. But I can just put it back there. And then I'm back to the neutral Janice who doesn't who isn't run by all that. When it was all here, it was running me. And now it's all, they all have their little compartments. And they're still part of me, but they're not running me. And I get to be in charge of what. I do and what I say and what I think and what I experience and and being in that neutral place where I can not choose from my emotional state and be able to make more of a discerning choice and 
or choose to, you know, be able to have the, the wherewithal to decide how I want to react instead of a knee jerk reaction makes all the difference in how my life looks every single day. How I interact with people, how they respond to me, how I look at what happened or, you know, what's going to happen or how I want, how I want to behave when I'm interacting with whoever it might be. And, and just being able to do that without being so emotional about it is, is it's, you know, money can't buy any of this. You can't put a price tag on any of this. When I try and tell people about the seven steps, they're, oh, I don't have the money. It's like, you, you don't not have the money. You know, I work, the other thing I didn't mention is I, I got ordained in 1999 as a non-denominational minister. And um, oddly enough, that landed me in the funeral business. And so for the last 11 years, I've laid about 200 people to rest. And that experience has really changed how I look at life, how I look at my life, how I look at why we're here and what agreements we might make before we come into this world and all those kinds of things. And and then that evolved into paranormal experiences happening, especially in the beginning, and not really like having any context to put that in. And then people started coming to me from the other side and not having any kind of context of well, what do I do with that? And and I've delivered a couple of messages which just make people cry and all that kind of stuff. And so having an awareness that we're all going to transition from this physical water bag of a body, as Danny and Brinkley likes to put it, a water treatment plant, <laughs> or just water, <laughs> waste treatment plant, something like that, water in, water out. Um it's made me really look at life very different. And I tell people all the time that when you have lunch with somebody or you go do something, wherever you take a walk, whatever you do, you're not just taking a walk or having lunch or dinner. You're creating a memory because one day one of you isn't going to be here. And the other one of you is going to say, remember that time we went on that walk and we talked about it. it there's so much more to everything we do than what we think. Uh, you were talking about how money can't buy your empowerment oh, yeah. you're no longer run by your old stories and old emotions and even if you haven't finished erasing all the old stuff there's another different shift that happened to you which is that you are now in control of yourself what you say and you're living life from a place of being powerful and having your stuff instead of your stuff having you and that sense of empowerment is priceless that's what you were saying right another example um I was struggling financially. I hadn't worked in over a year and a half. I only had a hundred dollars in the whole world and it was in my pocket. And I signed up to take the seven steps course for a really small monthly amount because that was all I had. And during the course, um, I cleared this giant sadness I felt about not having an income. And literally right after that, minutes later during lunch, I got a random phone call from a job recruiter and they offered me a job paying $10,400 a month, which was exactly what my goal was. That was Wayne's testimonial from the February 7th steps course. Wow. Yeah. So let me do the long and then that'll make the short more, more come to me more easily. So after the seven steps, what happened with my health was my IBS started getting less and less and less. I have maybe had one trip to the ER in a year, mm. year and a half Wow. in doing the seven steps. My digestive system is better by the month. My best day when I was really sick hardly even compares to a, if I were to have a worse day now. Wow. So the goal I came with, my most important goal was IBS, is I would say 95% gone. Amazing. 95 to, I, you know, I, I'd like to say 100%, but every once in a while it sneaks back, so... Then the other thing, when I talked about doing the seven steps with regards to the person that stalked me, I was having a lot of every single day memories popping in my head uncontrollably every single day and crying a lot and not feeling I had any control over that. And when I did that, the first time I did the seven steps, I would say 70% of all those memories popping in my head every day went away. Wow. And and it wasn't just the relief of having all those memories pop in my head. It was also having new space for new thoughts. 
which was mm. really exciting. And, and knowing that 70% maybe were, of the thoughts were gone, but now I have a tool to get ready to get rid of the, the other 30% and this doesn't have to run my life anymore. And if it's not running my life, what kind of a life I, I can create from that space that I've now created from taking all that gunk out of my life. Wow, that's amazing. Did you, did you finish the other 30% already? I would say I'm down to probably ten, less than 10%. Wow. Yes. That's and amazing. if you could have seen me before, I, you know, the PTSD, the after, like, oh, my God, what did I just go through, was almost as bad as the, the being stalked itself. I bet. I bet. It was just wow. different, but it was still crying every day. Wow. And, 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 and not being able to talk to anybody. And then when I did, they just wanted to hear stories, and that wasn't helpful. Wow. Yeah. So you, you must have felt trapped inside your own body. Very much so. Trapped by my emotions and very, um, you know, I spent every single day back then just flirting with suicide. Well, I'll never do it, but I'll spend plenty of time thinking about it every day. And how even about, talking, even talking to it as if it was an, an entity or a personality. Like I know you want me to do it. I'll, sh- you know, just having these arguments with myself was, you know, the other thing that was really good about the seven steps was that, you know, the one side of yourself that argues with the other side of yourself yeah. was that got real quiet. Wow. <clears throat> Excuse me. And even the voice inside, we all have that voice inside our head that says, "Oh, you shouldn't have done that." It was so parental before with like a pointing finger kind of talking down to me loud voice and after the seven steps it was more like you know you shouldn't have done that it was just Mm -hmm. so much softer so Mm -hmm. much softer and so much like oh i could hear that as opposed to you know go away i don't want to hear this don't tell me how bad i am and a lot of the self-talk that i said that was i don't want to repeat a lot of that went away with the seven steps you know i think people maybe not realize how much they can get rid of that is running them that we don't know that's running them because we just go oh well that's just my history and that's just who i am and it's like it doesn't have to be who you are you can you can clear it all and the idea that you can clear it permanently especially all the things i've done i would i never believed that until i had the experience that it is permanently gone and it's amazing that that anything you can do can permanently erase and remove trauma from the past, but what you've created, it, it does. And it, it, it just does. Even, I even argue with myself sometimes like, this is too easy. This is, <laughs> you know, this isn't going to work. And, and it, but it works every time. Yeah. You know, I think we're, we're, you know, we're so taught that no pain, no gain. So if you're not doing rebirthing and flailing around the floor with tetany in your hands, then you're not getting any benefit. And it's just not true. Mm. And how wonderful that you've created something where we don't have to flop around on the floor with tetany to get a result. And even that wasn't permanent, by the way. Right. Can you talk about how you didn't want to come to the course and because you didn't believe it was going to work? Do you remember I talked um, to you over the phone because you were just so distraught about coming? Yes. I was looking for any excuse to not come. Like, um, but I think the first time I called, I wanted to know the name of the hotel, and I got all like in my... And then you called me and you were just so nice. I thought, he's so calm. And he's, he's not like engaging in my, you know, my confrontation or my confrontational behavior attitude. And, um, yeah, so I was pretty, I didn't think that there was anything out there that could do what you claimed. Remove trauma from the past permanently. I, I just, not after, after I've been exposed to so many different things and tried so many different things and they all kind of promise the same sort of thing that it's like, okay, well, I'll give this a try, but I didn't really believe it would work. I just, I was more curious than anything. Okay. And now, you know, what I tell people all the time now, they'll go, oh, you know, maybe you should talk. I said, oh no, I have this tool in my toolbox. It's called the seven steps and I never have to go looking for anything ever again. Because I have something that works, and it works permanently. <laughs> that's fantastic. And that's a wonderful thing. I don't have to go looking for a workshop or read this book or find this speaker or do anything because I have the seven steps, and I don't need anything else. You it works every time, all the time for everybody. You just have to do it. You just have to do the work, like you said. Yeah. 
Do you remember when you had that overwhelming feeling that you were not in control of your life? And then I know you shared before that just the understanding that you have that belief and that that wasn't true was a huge breakthrough. But then you did the seven steps and erased all of those feelings of being out of control. Is that right? During the course? Yes. And then what happened after that with how you felt? Doors started opening. Coincidences started happening. Um, people started showing up. And, and you know, at all the speakers out there, all, they're all about, you know, it's your attitude, it's your attitude, it's your attitude. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have an attitude and I'm trying to get better and I have a... You know, I think I have a good attitude because I'm trying, 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 trying. And what I realized was attitude is everything because I, nothing in my life changed but, except my attitude. Right. And the only reason my attitude changed was because I was able to do the seven steps and shift my attitude. Right. Yeah, a lot of our attitude is programmed in unconsciously. And we try to use our willpower to overcome it. But it's so hard to do it every day, all the time, consistently, especially exactly. if you have a lot of a lot of stuff and even if you're trying with all your might those those issues can still manifest in your life and then if you can take them out permanently from the unconscious so you're no longer in a battle with yourself and it just automatically allows you to feel good and have a good attitude you're right dominoes start falling in life it's, it's just been amazing and you know even here's another thing that happened and it would never have happened without the seven steps i have a friend in my life who's very dysfunctional and she has a lot of problems and but her and I had the, the stalking thing in common and it was a very tight bond that we had and and she was whatever she three different times she wrote me off and three different times I got very upset and really wanted her friendship because she was like a sister to me and we just had another falling out she got upset about something and there's a part of me that's like you know that's okay actually and i find myself going wow really it's okay and it's like you know what it is okay and i bless her on her way but the 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 feeling that i need her in my life is it just it just like melts away it that it feels like now what i want is more a desire whereas before it was like i want it and mm -hmm. it was but it was like almost like a desperate want yeah it's not not a like oh I want that or I want that it was I, I want it so bad and I was yeah. you know and and I, I and now it's like it's my it's my desire and if it happens that'd be wonderful and if it doesn't that was a step if it bothers me <laughs> yes you've moved out of attachment and out of uh, coming from a place of lack into standing in a place of having and then choosing what you want which is how you can manifest things really quickly and easily. You know, one of the other things I love that you taught us that has made a tremendous difference in my life because I'm one of these people that hates when somebody says, oh, why did you attract that to yourself? Because I feel like it's an abuse of the law of attraction. It's only one half of the law of attraction. There's 11 other spiritual laws, and I go off on this whole tangent. Mm -hmm. And when you taught us that, love and joy and money and relationships and everything we want in life is trying to get to us and we just have these these little you know these blocks and it's not i'm not doing something wrong by attracting the wrong people blah 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 blah, blah. i just have a clog in my pipe oh my god i can so hear that yeah. i can so hear that because there's no i did something wrong attached to it mm -mm. thank you so much for that number one and so being able to shift from what am I not doing right and getting and, – and that was when I came to the seven steps, I was up to here with people telling me I wasn't doing it good enough or right enough or the right way or it's like, you know, I just – so when you introduce the whole idea that we're just – there's all these channels or pipes or however – I forget what you said, how you described it. And all that we want is trying to get to it. All we have to do is remove the block. Oh, my God, that's doable. Yes, it is. I can do that. And so it totally shifted how I look at everything. Yeah. yeah and, and money has come to me. And, you know, people have come in my life and, uh, you know, work has come. And, and, it, and it hasn't been too much and it hasn't been too little. It's been just right. Can you share about that, about how your finances have changed in a good way? My finances have changed in a good way without any effort on my part, which is amazing because I was living – 
on credit cards and what little money I made and stressing out about it and wondering, you know, how am I going to juggle this money to make it fit over here and, and juggle this to make it over there. And, and after I did the, especially the money course, It's and that it's that neutral observer thing. It's like my if I'm upset or worried about money, I can just go put it in that cubby and just come back to like it'll be there. I can, I can pull it down when I want, and I don't have it doesn't have to run me. Yeah. You know, for those that don't know, the money course is a course called More Money that I created that comes after the Seven Steps, and it's principles about wealth and also how to apply the Seven Steps to having more money. And it sounds like Janice, you used the Seven Steps with that course to clear a lot of money blockages and then the money started flowing in without you doing anything different. Is that right? Absolutely. My work picked up and, and I work, like I said, in the funeral business and I don't want to do more than one service a week because emotionally it's too much. And it's amazing how they'll just come in one a week, but okay. regular, but almost with a rhythm. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's like the, it's not too much and not too little. It's just the way I want it. And, and, I'm not even doing anything to make that happen. Right. It's just happening. Yeah. It's it's so wonderful. And is it true that your book has been selling more than it ever has without you doing anything? Oh, yeah. My book came out in 07, 2019. In the last 14 months, my book has sold more copies on Amazon than it has ever sold. Again, I did nothing to make that happen. I didn't course. do any promotions. I didn't send out any emails. Um you know, people will say to me, you know, oh, you're, I like your eyeshadow or I like your outfit today. And it's like, I think they just think I look so much healthier. When I look at pictures of myself two years, five years, however long ago, I did not look happy and I did not look healthy. And now when I look at my picture, it's like, wow, I look, I don't know that I look younger, but I look healthier. Yeah. And it just, just to be able to tell people, you know, when I didn't go to the ER for one year, I took my ex-husband, his wife, and all three of my kids, my daughter-in-law, took them all out to dinner to celebrate not going to the ER for one year, which I know sounds probably weird, but that was huge to me. Yeah. And that would not have happened without having practiced the seven steps and learned the seven steps. It yeah. just would not have happened. That's amazing. Can I share something about you? Um, your friend from Massachusetts called a week after you took the course back in July 2018, and she said, I just have to talk to Arno, so I got on the phone with her, and she said, I have to tell you, I don't know what you did to Janice, but now she looks like she's wearing makeup when she's not, the black under her eyes has gone away, I mean, she looks like she's had sex every day for a week, and whatever you did, I want it. Really? <laughs> yeah, you don't know about that? Yeah, I didn't so know that. It was amazing and hilarious at the same time. Oh, my God. Yeah, what a transformation she saw in you just, you know, in a video chat with you. Yeah. You know, so we was talking the other day about how when your phone rings, you you think, is this if somebody who's going to give me bad? The first thing you think, is this somebody who's going to give me bad news? And am I, do I want to hear it right now? And I, I thought, you know, people probably thought that of me when I called them because I used bad news in a way to connect with them because I didn't have a lot of good news. And I wanted to connect, and and now my friends are. I mean, everybody's noticed the difference in me. They're like, you're just so much happier. You're so much more at peace. And now when I pick up the phone to call somebody, and and, and they're going to answer, they know it's good news. Wow, that's a huge transformation. That's right. She said that you used to be really negative, and that you had no hope in life, and all that changed right after the weekend. And I remember after you cleared that big. Um, you're not in control of your life, powerless programming that you had, that you actually stood differently. You came on stage and gave me a copy of your book, and you just looked like a strong, powerful woman. You didn't look like that the day before. And it was incredible to see how much you changed in just one one day and one clearing. And now it's been 14 months, and I'm sure you've, I mean, it's obvious you've changed your whole life, your health, your finances, your relationships, the way that you feel inside. It's amazing. You're just an amazing, Janice. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. And thank you for creating a tool so that all of us can benefit and have better lives. And I can't say enough. When It's really scary to let go of a lot of emotional pain without knowing what's going to be, what's going to take that place when you let it go. And I, I think I was one of the biggest hard cells that came to your course. And... 
you can just look at my face and you can tell I'm a different person and just it's just from doing the seven steps. And and attitude is everything, but when you can permanently erase something, you can permanently erase that attitude. Yeah. Now, I want to be perceived as somebody that people want to be around, not somebody who people go, ooh, she's going to... Right. And and now, you know, I can just layer by layer by layer. You know, one of the things um, London Scott told me, you know, London? I do. Um, she said we were on the phone together one time, and I said, you know, sometimes I want to do it, and I just think, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And she said, just do it for one minute before you go to bed, <laughs> right before you go to sleep, just do one minute. And that was one of the most helpful pieces of advice I got after having completed the seven steps was if you can't do anything, just do one minute. And one minute always turns into two minutes, turns into three minutes, because you just get on a roll, or I do. And um, so that was really helpful advice that, you know, even if you have resistance and you don't have anyone to trade with, you can't pay for, you know, you or, or merit, that just do it for a minute. Because one yeah. minute, could, it, it, it'll still clear whatever's there to be cleared that yeah so just even a minute of your time can make a difference every day and everybody's got a minute absolutely that's great advice janice thank you for that you made me think of eric uh, eric messaged me a little bit ago on facebook saying that he had been suicidal throughout his life for most of his life and been institutionalized many times had over 60 electric shock therapy treatments and tried every drug there is and Try to be modality there is, and what he said was he did it for 30 minutes every day, and after wow. a year, he wasn't suicidal anymore. And he didn't really notice a big change until after several months in, but he just kept going. And now it's been almost two years, and you should see how big and genuine his smile is. It's quite remarkable. And then actually three minutes before we started chatting, someone messaged me that they did the seven steps last night while going to bed, just like what you were saying and cleared some money issues, and then today went to work and got a $2 an hour raise. Oh, wow. <laughs> the very next day. So that is really good advice. Just If you don't have the strength, just do it for one minute. It's amazing. Yeah, well, and, you know, I, I was going to say something you're talking about. What was it? Oh, well, maybe it'll come back to me. Well, I, I just want to thank you for sharing all, all of this because your whole story is incredible. You know, you're a published Oh, author. I know what I was going to say. Say it. Sorry. So this will, this will be a little laser focus. So before I did the seven steps, I flirted every day with suicide, suicidal thoughts. Like, I'm never going to do it. But it was, you know how people have cigarettes? It's like a comfort to them. It was a comfort for me to flirt with suicidal thoughts, knowing I would never do it. And after doing the seven steps, I don't have suicidal thoughts. But even more beyond that, like you were saying, I didn't, I, I didn't have hope. Too many things didn't work out. I decided not to have hope anymore, which lends itself to suicidal thoughts. Not only do I have hope now, I have faith that it will get better. Mm. And that's only from having practiced the seven steps. Mm. And your IBS is 95% gone. My IBS is 95% on its way to 100% gone. Yeah. And, you know, this is what I want to – I want to heal my IBS so I can help other people who have IBS, which is, what, one out of four or five. A lot of people are suffering with IBS. And I want to be able – and I can't help other people with IBS unless I'm cured. Right. Well, you're almost there. No, that I have my, my GI doctor tell me I would never be cured of it. It's like, okay, thanks for the challenge. You're yeah. on. And <laughs> See, that's the right attitude right there. That's amazing. Just tell you me know, I can't, you know. And that's the thing is you have the attitude and you never gave up and you kept looking for answers. You went to the natural path. You tried everything you did. You could. You did the diet. You did everything. You came to my course and then you did the work and that's why you're getting the results. Yep. And I no longer flirt with suicidal thoughts, which is really nice. And again, create the space for a lot more healthy thinking. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. The, the unknown can be really scary, but... When you're in the safety net of your, you and your staff, it's okay to be scared. That's true. Because you guys have us, and we'll just seven step through it, and then it goes away, and you can have your, the life you want. Like all those people that gave their testimonials, it's like, I want that. I want that. I mean, you know, looking back, I think it was jealous, and it, it wasn't envy. It was, you know, how did they get that, and why did they get lucky, and, and it wasn't. They just did the work. Yeah. 
and so did you. Now you did it too. Yeah. Wow. Do you want to share uh, a laser share? So all the different challenges you were facing, what you did, and then all the amazing results after. Let's see if I can. Okay. So before I came to the seven steps, I was, my biggest challenge was I had IBS so bad I was going to the ER. I flirted every single day with suicidal thoughts. I didn't have much of a life because my IBS dictated every day my energy level or whether I was up and mobile or whether I was in bed or on the couch. I wasn't very happy with myself. I was as happy as I could get on my own, having done a lot of stuff. And I had a lot of money issues. I was living on credit cards and had very little cash to live on. Um, and couldn't work because my health interfered with if I were to commit to anything, it would I'd have to call and cancel whenever I had an episode. So having done the seven steps, my IBS is almost completely gone. My money issues have turned around to the point where I don't worry about money because it just shows up. Not tons and tons, but it shows up with regularity, what I need every week, every month. I, I just don't worry about it anymore. It's not on my radar. Um, I sleep better. I um, don't have that voice telling me that I don't deserve to be alive and that other people deserve everything else in life and that some for some reason I don't. That voice is gone. And even the negative voice that I do have now is just a little, I shouldn't have done that. It's so much more kind than the cutthroat, vile voice that I had to listen to and didn't have control over. Mm. Um, I have better relationship with my kids. You know, one of the things I realized was in, in doing the seven steps and peeling back the layers, I realized my behavior, some of the things I was doing and how I would interact with them and my behavior was actually pushing them away. So I've removed that from having seven stepped it to where I have a better relationship with my kids. Um, I'm just happier in general, just more more joy in my life. I have hope for and faith for the future, and my relationships with other people are better, and my health is just everything is better. Every every aspect of my life is better. Wow, you're amazing. And I'm in control of my life. Yeah, that was so huge, and I knew it in that moment. I knew it was huge. I just couldn't communicate to everybody in the room like how big it was. Mm. Janice, you are such a great communicator. You're very articulate, and you share with emotion and authenticity, and I really appreciate you taking the time to share your story and your experience because it's just so powerful. You know, you being an author and having worked for other uh, very successful people, uh, other successful authors, and having taken so many courses and tried so many modalities, and to finally, you know, achieve the results you want in so many different areas of your life, how you feel every day, your health, your finances, your book sales. I mean, all of that is because you worked really hard. But I also really appreciate you being willing to take the time to share with me and share with other people. I mean, your story is very moving to me. And I'm very grateful to you. And I'm really glad I met you and that I know you. And I'm sure we're going to do some great things together. Yeah. I'm sure we will, too. Yeah. So... One of the great things about the seven steps is you actually save money by enrolling in the seven steps and paying the registration fee because you never have to take anybody else's workshop again and spend money on their workshop. (laughs) You're actually saving money by not continuing to look for the thing that's going to turn your life around because the seven steps is the thing. Wow, that is a great way to look at it. I've had a lot of students tell me it's that after, after taking my courses, then they went and spent tens of thousands of dollars on other courses like NLP, hypnotherapy, and they named a lot of different things, but those are really expensive ones. And they said they felt like it was just a big waste of time because they didn't learn anything new that would help them and that what they learned from me was all they needed to know. And they were annoyed that they wouldn't wasted that money because they didn't need it. And there wasn't anything useful in those courses. Not that they're not good programs. Right. It's just that what we're doing with the seven steps is so much more powerful and so much more accelerated. 
from around in like the 40s, 1940s, like 80 years ago. And what we're doing is a lot newer. And it's just we're it's driving a Ferrari instead of a T4. We're going really, really fast to make really, really big changes. And you only have so many years to live. And right. if you can't clear your issues fast enough, you might die before you finish clearing them. They might actually kill you. You might die from your issues. And that's actually one of the reasons why I sought out the fastest way to do this. Because I saw that if I didn't find the fastest way possible to get rid of those big bricks inside the body, I would die from them. And yep. so I, in order to live, I had to find this. It's, you know, it's so true. I just, I love that I never have to go looking for anything and because I have the seven steps and I can use it for everything. And the other thing about the seven steps is knowing that I don't have to ever go looking again. It's kind of like, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. You know, it's like Dorothy. It's like, it's so comforting to know I don't have to go looking anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really, really, really is because it probably NLP is the only thing I didn't do. Yeah. I've, I mean, I've just, and now I don't have to go looking. It's just like, it's like, ah, oh, I found the thing that's going to work for everything. Yay. <laughs> now I can use that time to think of other thoughts and not be always, you know, on people, you have time people spend on the internet checking out workshops. Should I go? They, you know, they, the cost, maybe, I don't know. You know, there's this other one over here. And I mean, it's just an endless, endless yeah. journey on the Internet of looking for the right workshop to take that's going to give you what you want. Yeah. And not that it's not like don't go, but it's like now I'll go with that's not what I'm not going with. They're going to save my life kind of intention. I'm going to go and just enjoy it because I already have the tool I need forever and ever and ever that's going to work for me no matter what. And I love that. Yeah. I really well, do. What would you say to someone who is on the Internet, like, looking for courses, trying to figure out if they should sign up for the 7 Steps course and, and take the training online? What would you say to them if they're on the fence about enrolling for the program? If someone's on the Internet and they're looking for something, a course to take, and they're on the fence about doing the 7 Steps, I, 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 you know, Steve Harvey says this all the time, jump. Just do it. Just do it. You guys are so good about working with people from the financial aspect once somebody gets to know you, they get real clear that it's not about the money for you, that you just want to help people. And, and some, for some people, that's hard to wrap their brain around because there's so many people out there that they are about the money. You know, um, just take the leap of faith and do it because this will change your life in ways you can't even imagine right now. And I was the biggest hard sell. I couldn't believe that there was something out there that could do what you said. And now... I'm 100. percent It's my it's my favorite tool, and I don't have to go looking any further. Thank you, Janice. You're awesome. Is there anything else you want to share? I just really appreciate you, and you know, I, I and not and not for the tape or anything like that. I really do get look forward to getting to know you better and working with you. And when when I signed up for the that's one of the reasons I so easily signed up for the course next year. You know, the benefit I've gotten and knowing I don't have to look anywhere else or take anybody else's course is, and I can just laser focus on the seven steps and what you teach. That's why I was in. You made me an offer. I couldn't refuse. Like, done. So, oh, you know, you know I forgot to say on my testimonial, I started a new company. You did? Called It's online. It's an online store. And it's called A Peaceful Goodbye. And they're down. It doesn't exist. There's a wide open lane on the Internet. No one's doing this. They're downloadable, fillable forms, temp, um, funeral, funeral template forms. So for somebody who's just going to have their loved one cremated and they just want to do a little something, something, they can download based on child or age or religious preference or whatever because they're mostly just – I don't do religion. I just do spiritual stuff. Right. Um, and they can just fill out the form and then do a little something, something you know, on their own. And so I have the logo. I have the name. I have the domain. And now we're building the website. And then it will just be an online store that, that we'll see what happens. So they'll be able to download a eulogy to give about yeah. someone? With the, well, the whole thing, the whole service, like the opening oh. prayer and then put a song in here and then oh. hit this and then put a song in here and then a visualization and another prayer and closing. So all they have to do is put their loved one's name and, and dates in there. and So they won't need to hire you or anyone else. They can do it themselves. And how powerful will that be? That's yeah. awesome. 
Because the, it, people just aren't having services. It takes, I think, eight cremations to equal what a funeral home makes on one service. And so more and more, and because more and more people are just doing direct cremations and picking up their loved one, this is perfect. It's, the timing couldn't be better. So that would not have happened if I had never done the seven steps because I had this idea four or five years ago and have been sitting on it all this time. Wow. That's amazing. I should tell you, I've had incredible success using the seven steps with people's grief from the death of a loved one. Really? Oh my God. So I'll tell you a couple stories real quick. So Elise was 40. When I met her, she was a former Olympian. Her mom died in a motorcycle accident on PCH in Huntington Beach when she was 28. So for 12 years, she lived in this horrible grief and sadness. She'd cry anytime she talked about her mom. Her garage was full of her mom's stuff and she couldn't even look at it. It was just all covered up. And we cleared that whole, all that grief in about 20 minutes on stage really? during the wow. during the course. And then right when we finished clearing it, there's the sound came through the speakers, boop, and it was Skype turning on on my computer, and my computer was plugged into the sound system. And that's the only software that will make noise when you turn it on. And I didn't touch anything. I was standing right next to her, and she just looked at me and looked at the audience, and she said, that's my mom. She does that sort of stuff to let me know she's here. And everyone got a chill, and it was amazing. And then... The first time I taught the seven steps at its own standalone weekend and not part of an integrative program, on the very first day, I did a demo with someone and we cleared his frustration that his daughter wouldn't talk to him, and that was great. But then this girl in the back stood up and she started crying and she said, what do you do about grief? And I said, why don't you come up here? It turned out her brother had just died of cancer, of leukemia. They were best friends. They were only a year apart. They were super close. And she was, her whole, she just looked like she was in a black cloud. She just looked awful. And we were seven stepping it. And I saw the audience, and some of them were angry because they didn't believe that you could get rid of the grief of the death of a loved one, that that isn't possible, that you're supposed to be sad, and that's part of life. And I just looked at them. I didn't say where I looked at them. I said, watch this. And in about 30 minutes, it was all gone. All the black wow. that she was shrouded by was gone. She was glowing with this white, positive energy. And I said, how do you feel now? And she said, I feel relieved that he's not in pain anymore. And I feel his spirit is with me right now. And everyone's like, oh, my God, I've never seen the entire audience cry. Every single person, they were passing tissues down every single aisle. All the guys were crying. It was amazing. Wow. And the next day I said, can you come up and tell us how you're doing now? Because people don't believe it's going to be permanent. So I want you to tell them how you feel. And she's like, I still feel the same. I, I don't feel any upset. I don't feel angry. I don't feel sad. I feel happy. I know his spirit's with me. It was just part of his journey. Oh, and by the way, I went home and cleared all my anger about my boyfriend. Right, and I have more stories like that. Like you said, they get attached to their grief because they don't think that if they're happy, that that means they didn't love that person. Right, and that's not true. In some cultures, people believe that when you're born, they should cry because being alive is suffering. And when people die, <laughs> they have a party to celebrate their freedom from suffering. Well, which culture is right? I wow. Think, I think that being sad on either end is a choice and that there's no reason to be sad when someone's born or when they die and that we can celebrate their life. And I see people doing that in our culture. In America now, people are starting to have celebrations when people die instead of yeah. having these sad um, mourning experiences. And it's not wrong to be sad, but you don't have to be sad. It's not required. It doesn't mean that you that you love them because you were sad. If you really love them, you'll be happy for them to be in a better place or wherever they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my services are so uplifting and positive, and people are always so surprised that it's not, a, you know, a boohoo fest. Right. You know, I call it their continuation day, and they're like, oh. Yeah. No wonder if people continuation. keep Continuation. Yeah, I have this story. I'll tell you real quick, and I'll let you go. I, have, I do a story, that, and people love it, and they either do a ship or an airplane, typically, but I've done a cowboy and a train, whatever. And so the ship is, you know, you're on a, at a harbor, on this big ship and all the passengers are getting on the crew's getting on with all their luggage and it, it's just huge and it starts its engines and the whole area vibrates and they're really really loud and as the ship pulls out of the harbor and it starts its voyage out into the the wild blue ocean with a new destination a new journey much like our loved one and then when that ship becomes a small speck on the horizon somebody next to us says they're gone but there's eyes watching and waiting and waiting, watching on the other side. And when they see that speck on their horizon, they go, look, here they come. People love that. Yeah. They love it. The idea that their eyes watching and waiting for their loved one and saying, oh, look, here they come. It changes their whole 
energy around how they're looking at their loved one. It's just yeah. amazing how a little visualization, a little visualization like that changes everything. But um, I'm real different than everybody out there, and I hope to. What I would love to do with the whole funeral industry is do big names, you know, give, give do big funerals. Mm. Like more, you know, I've done like 350 people. I want to do like 500, 1,000, three, you know, mm. big. Right. That's my goal. I like that. I like yeah. it a lot. And um, educate people on death is not the end. Exactly. I love yeah. it. I can tell you another story about that if you want that I tell people when they're sad and to help them to consider clearing their sadness. And I also want to share something that might help you achieve your goal. Okay. So as far as achieving your goal, you mentioned that you don't want to do more than one a week because it's draining emotionally. Look to see if there's something you yeah. can clear so that you won't be drained emotionally anymore. Good point. Right? Right? Yeah. When I taught martial arts, uh, my, my friends and I would always be exhausted after teaching except for Brad. Brad was never tired after teaching. And I was like, what is different about Brad that he gets energized by teaching? And I love teaching, but I feel tired after. And I found out what it was. I was attached to the results of my students, and he wasn't. If they didn't learn it, so what? They'll take the class again later. Big deal. Not my problem. It's up to them to understand. And I was very attached. And so I realized that attachment was my own fear, that it looked bad if my students didn't do well. And so I just needed to clear that fear. And once I did, you know, then I was able to. You said after you were able to clear your fear, you what? And then you froze. I, I don't get attached to the results of the students, right? Everyone's going to have their own experience of the courses. And my job is to put on the greatest course of all time and then let them experience it however they want to. And that, so then I don't feel tired from teaching. And it's similar but a little different when you're doing what you're doing in that there's something that's triggering you that's causing you to feel yeah, drained. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what it is. I, I identify with it. I identify with whatever's going on. That's it. And so if you clear all that, then you'll be able to stand in neutrality with whatever people are going through, all their sadness and all their pain and whatever they're feeling, and, and not try to heal them through your body. And you'll be able to do one every day, five, five a day or however long they take, and you won't be drained by doing any of them. Yeah, that's a good point. Because I've gotten to the point now where it's like, I don't know, the ones that I think are going to be easy end up being a booth, you know, I cry, and the ones I think are going to be hard end up being easy. And so I did one the other day for a 92-year-old woman thinking, well, it should be easy, and you know somebody said something, and and I was toast the rest yep. of the service. They pushed your button. That's all that that was. So that's it, and it's a great mirror for you. The other thing mm -hmm. is, um, when people are sad about someone dying, I just tell them about my grandpa and how he was in World War II and he was a tank commander, and someone in his uh, tank said he needed to go into the hole, and the hole was a secret hiding spot in the tank where you were the safest. And my grandpa told him, look, when it's your time to die, it's your time to die. Going in the hole is not going to help you. And he's like, I'm freaking out. I can't do anything else. I just need 24 hours in the hole to get my head together. And my grandpa said, it's not going to make any difference. But okay. So he goes in the hole. Their tank is hit by a bomb. But only one part of the tank is damaged. The hole. And that guy died. Really? Yeah. And my grandpa's point in telling me the story is that when it's your time to die, it's your time to die. He got shot from his hip all the way across his body to his shoulder. That was something I had to actually clear out of my body because those get passed down. And he woke up in the, in the hospital in, in, in the war, World War II, and the doctor was holding his intestines in his hand. My grandpa sat up and punched the doctor in the face and knocked out. And, you know, he lived well into his 70s, and he had the scars from all the bullets, and he still, he didn't die. So it's just the story was, when it's your time to die, it's your time to die. And that's what I try to tell people is, you know, a lot of times it's just meant to be. That's just where they're, it's their time now, and it's not bad. And like you said, helping people believe in there is an afterlife. And I share about people's near-death experiences. I have some students who've had them, and I've read several books on them. And there's a common theme with near-death experiences. They die, they see the light, they see a lot of their ancestors who are saying, you can come to heaven, and they realize, I'm not done with my mission. Yeah. And they come back to live their mission. That's why it's so powerful to discover your soul's mission in that course. So. I can't wait to discover what it's going to be. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. I just, you know, I think a lot of people have unresolved grief and they're, they've just ignored it for many, many years and decades and operate like it doesn't exist. Yes. It just becomes part of their background. In the last seven Absolutely. Seven, four, 
there was a gal that shared after that she had been sad for 10 years after her, her beloved died, but she just got so used to it that she forgot it was there. Yep. And then after, so she cleared that during the course. And then the day after she woke up feeling joyful and light for the first time in 10 years and the pain in her arm went away too. What an amazing thing. And she just forgot that she was sad about it until it was gone. And then she realized, oh, wow, I'm supposed to be happy like this. I was just depressed all this time. I didn't realize it. Amazing. You're the best. Thank you so much for taking the time. Back at you. Um, yeah, I really I, enjoyed it.